Who book ends? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, what you say? I left y'all to my plane. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ in His Son. that we didn't go over this morning. If you'll grab a bulletin out in the foyer where there are some changes in our in our directory. Um, if you'll grab a bulletin, you'll see what those changes are. Uh, we also want to offer our condolences to the family of Peter Schofield. Uh, he passed away on June 24. Most of you should know Deborah Goodwin is his sister. I guess that's Roger Goodwin's sister. We also went over the uh, services that are being are live on Facebook at Baldwin Church, and they are on delay on YouTube. So if there's any reason you can't be with us, you can sure don't have to miss that service. Thank you, Joel Foster, for the hard work. Also, uh, Susan Luttrell is back in the ER. I'm guessing having heart problems. So let's uh, let's keep her in our prayers and give her a call maybe tomorrow. See how she's doing. Uh, next week is going to be our ice cream fellowship after the Sunday evening service. All are welcome. Also, I read a note this morning. I'm going to read it again in case someone wasn't here. Sandra DeMars called to say that her daughter, Carla, came home from the hospital on Wednesday. Carla's five-year-old granddaughter, Brina, fell on the playground slide yesterday. She has a small fracture to her skull and a severe concussion, uh, and that family is asking for our prayers as well. This evening, uh, after worship service, we will be having our our personal works group. Um, we could use your help, so anyone who would like to stay for that is welcome to. We'll just meet in the classrooms after service and send out some bulletins to those who weren't able to be here. And tonight's worship service, uh, Brother David Borman will have our closing prayer, and Brother Joel Foster will open us up in prayer.
Father in heaven, we're thankful once again for this opportunity to come to this place, to fellowship one with another, to worship you. We pray that the things that we do this evening will be in accordance with your word, and your teaching. We pray that you will be glorified by our worship, and that we will each be uplifted and prepared and charged revived to enter into the upcoming week. Father, we pray for those that are sick, those that Brother John has mentioned, especially for Susan and for Sandra's granddaughter, her daughter, and for the Damaris's. They have been struggling with their health of late. We pray that you'll be with them as only you know how. Be with the doctors and the medical personnel that wait upon them, that they will be restored to a good measure of health that is your will. Comfort them in the meantime. Father, we have so many that seem to be in harm's way. We pray that you will protect our first responders, especially our military. We have seen so many police officers, Father, killed this year line of duty. The last count for half a year was 121 that were killed by firearms or means of that nature. Father, we pray that you'll be with them, be with their families, protect them as only you can. For those that agree from the multiple losses this past week, for the three in Kentucky and others, that have lost loved ones in the line of duty. We pray that you would be with them. Comfort them as only you know how. For our leaders, Father, we pray that you would defeat them in the things that are contrary to your word, that you would guide them to uphold the law, do those things that protect people, Strengthen people, strengthen our nation. Defeat them in the things that destroy our nation. But Father, we pray that no matter what they do, that we will stand for your truth, that we will understand that your word is the ultimate law, and that if the time comes that we are told that we should not obey, that we should hide your truth, that we will understand, as Peter said, we ought to obey God rather than man. Father, we pray for this church, the church the world over, that we will stand for your truth, that we will go out into the community and shine our light so that others will want to have a part in that home in heaven. Help people, Father, to see your truth and to understand your truth. Satan is busy. He works hard to put scales on people's eyes so that they do not see, do not understand, and we pray that they will open their minds and understand your simple truth. Father, we pray now that you be with us in this worship service and in the upcoming week. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Nine three one. Nine three one. Hear my cry. Yeah. 
funny because I picked the wrong one, but it works. There's two tunes in our book, and this is not the one I picked. But it's the one I put in the last one. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but Turn into your Bibles. Keep your thumb there. Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. And then when you have that mark, turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Something amazing was happening here during the time that Solomon had finished building the temple. Just prior to that in chapter 6 we can read of a lengthy prayer that Solomon prayed. And after that prayer fire from heaven came down and consumed the burnt offerings and the sacrifices. And the glory of God had filled the temple. The amount of sacrifice was 
truly awesome. 22,000 oxen, 120,000 sheep. The Bible tells us that when Solomon had finished, that that night the Lord appeared to him. We don't know if anyone else knows. The Bible doesn't say. But read with me verses 12 through 14 in 2 Chronicles chapter 7. It said, And then the Lord appeared to Solomon in the night and said to him, I have heard your prayer. I have chosen this place as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. <clears throat> what we can see here reading between the lines, so to speak, is that God desires his people to seek him. Revival in a church is not done by seeking revival. It's not done by hosting revivals or seminars or gospel meetings. Revival happens when God's people collectively together, individually, humbly seek God. It is that seeking of God that changes us. It is that seeking God that takes us from the person we used to be to the person we are today and to the person that we will be in the future. To be honest, we do not pray as often as we should. We might start our day with a prayer. We might ask God's blessing for our food and a prayer before we eat. But getting by ourselves and on our knees and literally talking with God as often as we can, it's not done very much anymore. But there are times in the Bible and things that we can see, which is why I wanted you to mark Acts chapter 12, where groups of people gather together, <clears throat> where they prayed as a group. People who pray together are not alone. When we talk with our brothers and sisters, when we share our burdens or our anxieties or any of, I guess, what we could call negative emotions, and we ask them what they're doing about it, what do they say? Do you get from them a plan of action to get over it? Well, tomorrow I'm going to go see the doctor or uh, I'm going to talk with the banker or whatever. Do they say that they are praying? You know, turning to God during difficult times is a good thing. When we do that, it helps us to understand that we are not in control. The hardships that we face can actually drive us to a deeper spiritual awakening. In this chapter, in the book of Acts chapter 12, we find that 
James was executed. He was the brother of John. This Herod, Herod, Herod Agrippa I, was the grandson of Herod the Great, the one that was ruling when Jesus was born. His son would be Herod Agrippa, the one that Paul would stand before. This man was evil. He would use whatever means was at his, to, his disposal to stay in power. Seeing that killing James gave him favor over the Jews, he went ahead and had Peter arrested. And his plan was to kill him. The miraculous escape of Peter, his time in prison, we use it so often in sermons. But this evening, what I want us to look at is what occurred behind the scenes. During this time, a great persecution had broke out. At that time, the church was probably 10, 15 years old, a fledging church. But it was growing. But at this time, it was a church that was found in favor of all the people to be falling out of favor. And only one explanation can be given for that, and that is evangelism. The Lord's church at that time, and the way it should be today, is that it was filled with Unity, joy, peace, and most importantly, love. And as a result, people the Jewish faith examined the teachings of Christ, and they became Christians. In other words, they left the Jewish faith. The Jewish leaders got very concerned over this. And they would lead a persecution that would last 30 to 40 years. With that persecution happening with the death of James and the imprisonment of Peter, in verse 5 of Acts 12, we read, So Peter was kept in prison, for an earnest prayer for him was made to God by the church. We don't have any religious leaders that have been imprisoned yet. <coughs> but if that was the case, would we gather together as a group and pray for them collectively and fervently? This church had lost one leader. They were fixing to lose another. And the times that they were going through were very tough. I'm sure there were some who left the faith because of that persecution. The one thing that is obvious in this text is that the church came together in earnest prayer. It is that phrase, earnest prayer, that is the turning point in this account. We oftentimes look at prayer as a ways to a means. We pray for things, but we don't really always expect things to happen because of that prayer. We pray, we feel good that we prayed, and then we move on. But we can never underestimate the power of that prayer. An angel of the Lord came to get Peter out of that prison. But it was prayer that sent that angel. Remember what God said in the beginning of this lesson. If my people humble themselves and seek my face and pray. And in this account, that is exactly what has happened.
if we will ever experience a true spiritual revival as Christians, it will be when the church collectively seeks God's face. When you look at the different accounts in the Bible, oftentimes it is prayer that is the turning point. You see, prayer is the moment when we as individuals and as a congregation admit our need and dependence on God. The prayers in the early church were encouraged the congregations and there was a purpose behind them. Sometimes it was because of the persecution would be like we just saw in Jerusalem. Sometimes they prayed as a church to understand God's will. We have that example in Acts chapter 13 in the first three verses with the church in Antioch. Now there were in the church in Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menaeum, a long time friend of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. And while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work in which I have called them. And after fasting and prayer, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. You know, we understand at least the health benefits of fasting. It's used pretty much to purify, cleanse the body. And during those fastings, that water is the only thing that can be consumed. We have different cultures that fast today. Some of them don't eat during the day and then they'll eat at night. Well, that's not fasting. I do that just about every day, it seems like, sometimes. I used to. Nikki stays on me a little bit more about eating during the day. But it helps. It shows our dependency on God for our sustenance. Those who lead the churches, whether it is the elders, and if they don't have elders, the men of the congregation, ought to be leaders in collective prayer time. <coughs> Remember in Acts chapter 6 when there was an issue about food not being distributed equally among the widows. And there were complaints. The one thing the apostle said is found in verses 2 through 4. And the twelve summoned the full number of disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, Brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. You know, I remember a time when we lived in North Charleston. Every Monday night from seven to nine, the elders and the minister would be at the church building. Anyone who had a need would be able to go in at that time and talk to all three elders and the minister together. Whether it was a problem they were having or, or some issue in their, their own lives or their health, the elders were there. But you did not go in there and talk to the elders until they prayed first. Collectively together. When 
Paul wrote to the various churches, he would always ask the church to pray for them. But Paul always told the churches that they were in his prayers. I think it's time that as a church, as the Lord's church, that we need to seriously consider our prayer life. Turn to 1 Timothy chapter 2. I like to read verses 1 and 2 and verse 8. Paul was trying to teach Timothy the things that he needed to do for the churches in which he ministered. And Paul wrote to him and he said, First of all, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions and thanksgivings be made for all the people for kings and all who are in high positions that we may lead a peaceful quiet life godly and dignified in every way and then in verse 8 he says and I desire that in every place the men should pray lifting holy hands without anger or quarrel this was Timothy's instructions to his congregation Timothy was to get the congregations to work with this. In the book of James, James understood that there were times when small groups of prayers, prayer warriors would be needed. And often these times were when a brother or sister in Christ were struggling in sin. But it wasn't really necessary for that sin to be broadcast to the whole congregation. In these situations, James recommended that a person call the elders to come and pray for him. And James simply talks about the prayer of righteous people. what he said in James 5 verse 16 therefore confess your sins one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working our second Monday of the month our prayer night our other times of fellowship is often considered like extracurricular activities. And we all know from high school and college, maybe even elementary school, middle school, that extracurricular activities are not attended by everybody, just a select few. That's not the way it's supposed to be in the church. It's easy to believe that prayer is good to have. But it seems like it's not important enough to join in. You know, some, it's something that we briefly tack on the meeting before we get down to business. time that we have together oftentimes it seems as optional it seems as if it takes a second a back seat to the other activities within the church our Bible classes our worship services friends if we don't devote ourselves the apostles teaching and fellowship the breaking of bread and prayer where are we going to end up
don't know how to say this in the way that I anticipate. If our prayer life is such, you make it like a phone call, and God answers the other end, and we say hello. Is God going to say, who is this? Or does God know who is calling? That's what we need to think about. Let our voice to God be as familiar to God as our voices are to each other. We will find our lives so much easier. So much easier to deal with. If there is anyone here tonight who has not obeyed the gospel, we want to give you the opportunity I'm oft times reminded during these times within my own mind <coughs> what is written in Isaiah 55. And God will not hear the prayer of the sinners. And that is a hard thing to fathom. Are we calling God and just getting a busy signal? As a child of God, you don't get a busy signal. It's on the other end listening. Don't get the busy signal any longer. Don't delay. Through your faith, the faith that brings you here, the faith that tells you that God is real, let that faith bring you to repentance and confession and allow that faith to help you believe that the baptism you received will wash away your sins and give you a fresh start in life. If you are a child of God and your life is, is not the way it should be, you need to make some changes and you need to publicly confess those things or you just need our prayers. If anyone has a need, won't you come as together we stand and we sing? Is the grandest thing through the ages wrong? Is the grandest thing for a mortal tongue? Is the grandest thing that the world ever sung? Our God is able to.
don't believe I see anyone who did not have the opportunity for the Lord's Supper. Oh, okay. You can please be seated. Bow with me as we ask the blessing for the bread. Our Father in heaven, we are thankful, Lord, to be able to gather around this table in this memorial feast to remember the sacrifice your son gave on that cross. At this time, Lord, we ask your blessings on this bread that represents the body of your son. We pray, Lord, that as we partake of it, that we reflect on that sacrifice and just how dear it is to us our salvation and eternal life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's continue in prayer. Father in heaven, we ask your blessings on this fruit of the vine represents the blood that was shed on your, by your son on that cross. And we're just grateful, Lord, that this blood that continually washes the souls of your children when they come to you for forgiveness. For without this, Lord, we'd be condemned forever. And we're just grateful, Lord, that we have these things to remember your son by. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. basket on the table for those who may did not have the opportunity this morning to give. Will you bow with me please? Our Father in heaven, we are so grateful for the things that you provide for us on a daily basis. The ways that we have to be able to sustain ourselves are truly from your gift and your bounty. And we're grateful for that. We pray Lord now as we return just a portion of the things you've allowed us to take care of. Pray, Lord, that it is with a humble and cheerful heart that we offer these gifts. We pray that you'll accept them, that these gifts may be used to further thy kingdom on this earth until that day when you send your son home back to us and take us all home. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Anything further by anybody else before we close the night? If you'll stand, it will be dismissed with prayer. Let's pray. In the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, 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 the That's what we have today. That's our weather given to us through the word. That's our side, and that's what we have given to us through the word. There are just some hospitals that have surgery. There are doctors and uh, hospitals and family members. They're all of them going to get well. Don't give me help. Get to this pulpit. Get to my given to us through the word. Get to see if we Give us a ball, have a nice blessing tonight, and this morning, give it to us through the word. Help us just bring it here, give it to us through the word. Get the military, the police officers, the firemen, the, the laws, the law of West Kentucky, give it to us through the word. The missionaries, the baby, give it to us through the word. Hang on the cross, she can pay me to see his blood, that cost a family, give it to us through the word. Of my family, I'm very much, I took my dad, uh, my mom, I'm very much, give it to us through the word. Better than this country here, every station, 
being judged. Uh, any slaughter. What have we done? Uh, this place, okay, the night, all the way to heaven. We're going to be meeting again. Just like I know. Amen. 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 Am